teach first grade at Mirror Lake Elementary in Federal Way. Yesterday, we learned about sneaky E and how sneaky E changes the vowel sound but stays silent. For this lesson, you will need sound cards, your foundations journal or writing paper, and a writing utensil. I like to use a pencil so I can fix my mistakes. I'll wait a second for you to gather all of your materials. Exciting news, Baby Echo is back to read our message for today. Follow along with her as you read the words. Hello, world changers. Today is Tuesday, July 7th, 2020. Great work. All right, first graders, it's time for our warm up with our favorite special guest, Baby Echo. And Baby Echo is going to help us review the five vowels of the alphabet. Did you know the alphabet has these five vowels, A, E, I, O, U, and these five vowels all have two sounds, A, A, E, I, 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 O, O, A, U. Now let's go over them with a letter keyword sound. A, apple, A. A, safe, A. E, ed, E. E, Pete, E. I, itch, I. I, pine, I. O, octopus, A. O, home, O. U, up, A. U, mule, U. Good work, first graders. You are on fire already. Okay, for the next part of our warm up, we are going to practice our vowel teams. And you'll have to pay really, really careful attention because some of these vowel teams have more than one sound. So we're gonna go over them. And first, I'm gonna teach you some motions so that when Baby Echo and I point to the, set, the letter keyword sound, then you can do the motions along with us as you say the words and the letters and the keyword and the sound. Sound good? Perfect. All right, so we're going to start with A-I, bait. So like you have a little hook. A-I, bait, A. A-Y, play, like you're playing checkers, A. E-E, -E, jeep, like you're honking a horn, beep, beep, jeep, E. E-A, eat, eat, E. E-Y, key, E, O, I, coin, oi, O, Y, boy, oi, O, A, boat, O, O, E, toe, O, O, W, snow, O, and this one has two sounds, O, W, plow, ow, O U, this one has two sounds too. O U, trout, like a fish. Trout, ow. O U, soup, oop. O O, school, oo. O O, book, u. U E, blue, blue. Ooh. U E rescue you. E W chew you. A U <laughs> A U August ah. A W saw ah. Amazing job! Are you ready to follow along with me and Baby Echo? Awesome, let's do it. All right. A I bait A. A Y play A. E E jeep E. E A eat 
E. E Y K E. O I coin oi. O Y boy oi. O A boat o. O E toe o. O W snow plow. O U trout soup. O O school book. O U blue rescue. E W chew you. A U August ah. A W saw ah. Great work, my friends. Baby Echo is really proud. You bet. Okay, first graders, it's time for my favorite part, our learning target and success criteria. This is how we know that we have done our learning job for the day. So I'll know that you're ready when you get up on your feet and you stand nice and tall and get your voice ready to say the words along with me. And remember, just like yesterday, we're going to mirror. So that means that you stand up on your feet you put your hands out in front of you like this, and when you hear me say the word mirror, mirror, you magically know that it is your job to follow along with my words and my actions. Are you ready? Let's get started. Our learning target today, ready? Mirror. I will identify if a word has an open or closed syllable and read the words. Great job. Now it's time for our success criteria. Are you ready? Okay, let's do it. I can identify if a word has an open syllable or a closed syllable. I can read the word out loud. Great work, friends. We are so ready to learn today. And remember, as we go through the lesson, think back. Hmm, am I identifying if the word has an open syllable or a closed syllable? Am I reading the word out loud? Even though I know Mrs. Peek can't hear me, I can still hold myself accountable and make sure that I'm doing the learning. Are you ready? Okay, you're probably wondering, Mrs. Peek, what are open and closed syllables? Well, you're in the right place. I am going to build a word and I need your help to identify the letter sounds. So when you see the letter appear on the screen, I need you to tell me what sound it makes. What sound is this letter making? <gasps> yes, great work. It makes the sound g, g. Okay. Now, let's add the next letter. Do you see the letter? Can you tell me what sound it's making? <gasps> Amazing, yes, it makes the sound ah. Oh. So now we have g, ah. Oh. All right, so this letter is a vowel and it's actually kind of tricky because this letter, normally we would think it would say ah, but in this case, it's going to say its name. What is this letter's name? Awesome! This letter's name is O. Do you see my lips? O. Now let's tap this word out with the sounds of it, the sound that the letter makes. Okay? G O. Okay, now we gotta blend it all together. G O. Go. <gasps> wow! Now let me hear you. <gasps> awesome job, friends! Incredible work. Okay, now I want you to go ahead and put your hand under your chin. Can you do it? Awesome. Now, when you say the word go, do you feel how your chin touches your hand just one time? Go, go. So when I open my mouth and my chin only touches my hand one time, I know that the word go has just one syllable, go. There are some words that have more than one syllable, like the word cat, cat just has one syllable. But if I say cat knit, my chin touches my hand two times, cat knit. And I know that cat knit has two syllables, but the word go, go has just one. And because there are no consonants after the O in go, 
I know that O isn't, go has an open syllable, right? Go. And that means the letter is going to say its name instead of saying its sound. So instead of saying ga, we say go, right? Now, I wonder what happens if we add another letter to this word. You should see it on the screen. What sound does this letter make? You're brilliant. T -t -t. That's right. We call this letter a guardian consonant because it's going to be the boss of this vowel, O, and it's going to tell O what sound to make. So we know that when O doesn't have anything after it, it says its name, O. But when we have a guardian consonant like T that says T, T is going to say T. You cannot say your name. You can only say your sound, ah. So what sound does the O make? Ah, that's right. So let's tap out the word now that we know that O is going to say its sound. Ready? Okay, let me hear you. Make sure you have your hand ready to tap it out. G, ah, t, g, ah, t, got. Amazing work, first graders. So this is a closed syllable because we have that guardian consonant T and it's going to say t -t -t. you cannot say your set you cannot say your name you can only say your sound Mrs. P are you here I'm, I'm ready to build some words with you today Hi Echo how are you I'm so happy you're here Here let me take that from you Remember let the adults handle the tools we're just going to build some words, and we don't need any tools for that. But thanks, Baby Echo. I'm really glad that you could help us out. <laughs> All right, are you ready to get started? Okay, so today um, we are going to continue building words just like we did yesterday, and Baby Echo is going to help us practice identifying if a word has an open or closed syllable. And then we'll, we'll, we'll use what we know to read it. Because remember, if a word has an open syllable, like the word go, where there's nothing after the vowel, then the vowel is going to say its name. But if the word has a closed syllable, like got, where there's a guardian consonant after the vowel, then the vowel is gonna say its sound. So, I need you to take out your magnifying glass and look really closely at the word on the screen. Do you see the vowel? What is the vowel? I can't hear you. Oh, yes, the vowel is E. Are there any consonants after the vowel E? Oh, Baby Echo says no. I agree with Baby Echo. So this is an open syllable. Oh, she agrees. <laughs> and the vowel says its name. What's the vowel's name? E, that's right. So that was some great detective work. Now that we know that the vowel says its name, let's go ahead and tap it out to read the word. Okay, make sure your hand's ready to tap it out. W e. We gotta blend it all together. W e. We. <gasps> Great work, friends. Okay, now our next step is to build the word with our body. Are you ready, Baby Echo? Oh, she's ready. Okay, ready? Now this, remember, if the word has some plain line letters, then we're gonna squat down like this. If it has skyline letters, we're gonna stretch our bodies out really tall like this. And if it has worm line letters, we'll squat really low and put our hands down low. Okay, so just like with our learning target and success criteria, make sure that you mirror me, all right? Okay. W, E, we. Great work. Okay, now it's time to sky write. So go ahead and point two fingers directly at the screen, straight like a pencil, and we're gonna write the word in the sky. Are you ready? Okay. W, E. Amazing work, first graders. Doesn't that feel good to stretch out your body? And remember, tracing the words like this helps us remember the shape of the letters so that when it's time to write the words, we don't have to think about it. It just comes right to us, which is super exciting. Okay. Now, I need you to make sure that you have your pencil ready. Baby Echo, I'm going to have you sit right here. Thanks, Baby Echo. Perfect. And I need you to get out your pencil. I'm going to get out my dry erase board. 
and you are going to write the word we on your paper. Need to find my marker. Oh. All right. See if you can write it quicker than me. And make sure that you stay inside the lines. All right, let me see it. Amazing work. Look. It's, does yours look like mine? Awesome job, first graders. I'm super proud of you. Okay, now we have just one more word. And I need you to pay really, really careful attention. This is a super hard one. Are you ready? Okay. So, now, do you see the vowel? Is there anything after the vowel? <gasps> no? So what does that mean? That's right, it's an open syllable. So that means that the vowel's going to say it's, yes, it's name. The vowel's going to say it's name. So let's tap out the word knowing that the vowel says it's name. Ready? Sh, sh, e, sh, e, sh, e. <gasps> let's blend it all together. Sh, e, she. Good work, first graders. I told you that was gonna be really tough. Okay, now we're gonna tap it out, or, or we're gonna build it with our body. We just tapped it out. Sh, e. Oh my gosh, she, good work. Okay, now it's time to skywrite it. So make sure that you have your two fingers pointing toward the screen, and I need you to write it really big, as big as you can, ready? Sh, e. <gasps> wow, did you write it as big as you could? Awesome job, I knew you would do it. Okay, now we're gonna write it. Great work. And I put a line above the E to show that the E says it's long sound, right? E, it says it's name. Just like in we, we, she. They rhyme because they have the same end sound. Amazing work, first graders. I am so proud of you. First graders, I am so proud of all your hard work today. We learned that if a word has a closed syllable, the vowel says it's short sound. But if the word has an open syllable, the vowel says it's name. Do a quick self-assessment. Did you identify if the word has a closed or open syllable? Tap out the sounds in each word? Read the word? Count on your fingers how many of those things you did today. Then touch your brain and see if it's on fire because you have been working so hard. Something you can do to keep practicing these skills is find someone at home and ask them to write a short word like dog, he, or chum. And then you can explain to them if the word they wrote has an open or closed syllable and how you know. And you can use the sentence stem. The word you wrote has a closed syllable or open syllable because blank. I'll see you tomorrow. Great work again, friends. Welcome back to First Grade Math with Mrs. Pernia. Uh, today we are going to spend some time with our calendar again, and then we're going to move into number sense. For our number sense, we're still going to be using our number bonds to write some addition and subtraction equations. But this time, we're going to try to figure out if there's some missing numbers in our addition and subtraction equation. But first, we're going to get started with calendar. So again, we're going to start with our months of the year. And there are how many months in a year? Yeah, there are 12 months in a year. And remember, that is two more than 10. 
So go ahead and sing with me for our month of the year song. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and August, September, October, November, and December. These are the months of the year. Okay, one more time. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and August, September, October, November, and December. These are the months of the year. Do you remember how many months there are in a year? Yeah, that's it. There are 12 months in a year. Do you remember what month we're in? Yeah, we are in the month of July. Last time we talked about this too. How in each month there are weeks and there are seven days in a week. Each one of them has the word day. So go ahead and join with me as we sing our days of the week song. So it goes like this. Days of the week. 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 There's Sunday and there's Monday. There's Tuesday and there's Wednesday. There's Thursday and there's Friday. And then there's Saturday. Days of the week. 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 Okay, we're going to sing it again one more time. Here we go. Days of the week. 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 There's Sunday and there's Monday. There's Tuesday and there's Wednesday. There's Thursday and there's Friday. And then there's Saturday. Days of the week. 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 Awesome job. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to look at our calendar for July. And we're going to talk about what was yesterday, what's today, and then what will be tomorrow. Yesterday. So yesterday was Monday, July 6, 2020. Can you say that with me too? Yesterday was Monday, July 6, 2020. Today, today is Tuesday, July 7, 2020. Can you say that with me too? Today is Tuesday, July 7, 2020. Tomorrow, tomorrow will be Wednesday, July 8th, 2020. Can you say that again one more time? Tomorrow will be Wednesday, July 8th, 2020. Nice job, friends. The next thing for our calendar piece is we are going to do some patterning, and we're going to try to figure out what would come next. Remember last time you told me what kind of shape this was? What kind of shape are these donuts? Yeah, I know they're donuts, but what kind of shape are they? Yeah, they're in like a circular kind of shape. Do you see that pattern again? Yeah, that pattern is still the same thing. It goes pink, then brown, brown. Do you know what would come next for today, the 7th? What do you think? Yeah, definitely. It's going to be a pink one because it would go like this. Pink, brown, brown. Pink, brown, brown, pink, brown, brown, pink. Ooh, do you have a guess for what tomorrow might be? <laughs> Great job. Okay, we're going to move on to our next thing. And that's going to be our days of summer number fun. Because usually in school, remember, we would do our days of school. But now that we're at summertime, we're doing days of summer. And so far, there has been 23 days of summer. And if you were to take 23 and put it in a number word and write it, it would look like this, 20 and then 3. Now, if we were to show what that would look like with a 10 frame, what do you think it would look like there? Yeah, definitely. You definitely have a 10 like yesterday. What else? Should it be more than that? Yeah, definitely another 10 because 1 10 and 2 10s create 20. Now, what do you think would come next? Do you remember from yesterday when I pointed out these digits, what they stand for? If we have already 20, how many more do you think we'll need to get to 23? Yeah, definitely. We're going to need one more to get to 21. After 21 comes the number 22. 
And then after 22 comes the number 23. So it looks like it was like, it was just kind of like yesterday too. So the two means two tens and the three means three. Yeah, three ones. Good job, friends. And now the next thing we're going to go and look at over here is if it's even or odd. Looking at the 10 frame that we have there and our number 23, do you think this is even or do you think it's odd? Yesterday, we talked about how an even number is a number is even if it has a pair, if it's able to partner up with a buddy. What do you think? Looking at that 10 frame of that number, do you think it's even or do you think it's odd? Yeah, I totally agree. It's going to be odd. The reason it's odd is kind of like what you were saying. It's because all these tens, like yesterday, they were all able to have a buddy. This 10 and this 10 here, they were all able to have a buddy. But this group here, these two are buddies. But this guy here is left out. This one here is left out. So that makes it an odd number. Okay, one more thing for days of summer. First, we're going to show what 23 looks like with our tens and ones block. Do you remember what it would look like? It's kind of like what we just did with the 10 frame. You got to think about those digits. What does this two mean and what does this three mean? Yeah, that's it. So the two means two tens. So that means I'm going to have two groups of 10 there. Perfect. And now that three, that three just flies in. That three means that we're going to have three ones. So I'm going to have one one, two ones, and three ones to make the number, yeah, the number 23. So the next part is we're going to look at the number 23 again, and we're going to think about what one more than 23 would be. Do you know what one more than 23 would be? Yeah, that's it. If I had one more of these one blocks right here, 23 and one more would be 24. But now if I'm going backwards, if I'm going backwards one and I'm taking away one, going one less, what do you think that number would be? Yeah, that's it, 22. Because if I took out this guy here, then it would be one, two, two ones, and I still have my two tenths, so it'd be 22. Nice job. Now I'm going to look at 23 in terms of a number bond. For a number bond, I have to think about my whole and my two parts. My whole in this problem is what number? Yeah, it's 23. It's the number I've been saying over and over again. Now, what are my two parts? Yeah, I knew you were able to get this one here. Yeah, because you're looking at that tens and that ones block right there and trying to figure out what your two parts could be. And so you know that one part is 20 because there's two groups of your 10. And then the other part is three because you have your three ones right here nice job friends that was so amazing for calendar time now we're going to move into number sense and here's our learning target for number sense remember last time we spent some time looking at our number bonds and using that to write addition and subtraction equations today it's going to be a little bit different but i know you can do it so it says i will use a number bond to determine missing numbers in my addition and subtraction equations. Let's read it again one more time. I will use a number bond to determine missing numbers in my addition and subtraction equations. Okay, now the next page I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna break this down for you so that you totally understand it and you're able to do this successfully with me, okay? So the first part again says, I will use a number bond. And you already know this. You already know what a number bond looks like. It's just the one we had before where we had 23 as our whole, and one part was 20, and the other part was 3. And where 23 was the total or the whole, and 20 and 3, those are the, those are the parts. Nice job. So I will use a number bond to determine missing numbers. So we're going to have to look at it and figure it out in my addition and subtraction num equations. So if I have my addition equation, or if I have my subtraction equation, maybe one of these parts or the total will be missing, and we'll have to look at our number bond to see what it could be, okay? So that's what we're gonna be doing today. So this first part here is our number bond that we just used. 
we just had 23 for our days of summer, and we broke that into one part of 20 and the other part of three. And remember, we're gonna look at that, and we're gonna try to figure out if we have any missing numbers in our addition and in our subtraction equations. And remember, for addition, we have always part, part, and together it makes a whole. In a subtraction, we actually start with the whole or the total, and we take away one part, and then we get the other part. So first, we'll start off with addition. So with our addition equations, those are the two ones that I have already for you. Do you see what missing number? Do you see what that missing number should be? Let me read the math equations to you. The first one says 20 plus, 20 plus something is the same as 23. If I look at my number bond, I have 20, and I have to add another part to get to 23. Do you know what that missing part could be? Yeah, that's it. It's totally going to be 3 because it's totally going to be 3 because that is the other part that always goes together to make 23. Now let's look at that next equation at the bottom there. It says something. Oops, one sec. There you go. It says something, something plus 20 will be the same as 23. What do you think that number could be? If I have something and I add 20 more to it, how am I going to get 23? What's that other missing part that's going to go with it? Yeah, definitely. You got it. It's also 3. All we did is flip that back equation around. Great job, friends. Now let's look at our subtraction equations. So for the first part there, it says 20 is the same as 3. Hmm. When I look at our subtraction equation here, it looks like first we need some sort of total, and then we need to take away a part, and then that's going to be the same as another part. Do you think you know what could be missing there? Yeah, we're missing our total, and our total is already here. Our total is 23, so that needs to go in. Now, do you know what should be missing, or what's still missing? Yeah, that's right. We're missing our subtraction sign right there so that we can know that it's subtraction. Now let's look at our second equation. That says 23. Oops, this thing. That says 23 minus 3 is the same as something. If I'm starting with 23 and I'm taking away one part of three, what's that other part that I'm left with? Do you know what that number could be? Yeah, that's right, it's 20, because that's we're just switching around the parts there as well too. Nice jobs, friends. Now we're gonna move on to another one. So in this one here, our parts are going to be different. Our part is now 20, and one of the other parts is 8. And 20 and 8 go together to make 28. So those are two parts going together to make our whole. And then we're going to try to use this to try to figure out any missing numbers in our addition and subtraction equations. So first we'll start off with addition. The first addition equation says 20 plus something will be the same as 28. The next addition equation says, if I have something and I add 20 more, that will be the same as 28. Do you know what could be missing in this first one here? If 20 is one part, what number does it go with to make 28 altogether? What number do you think it could be? Yeah, that's right, it's eight, because if you look at your number bond, we already know that 20 and 8 go together to make 28. Now let's look at that second math equation down here, the addition one. What do you think will go with 20 to get 28? Yeah, that's right. It's definitely also going to be 8, right? We're just flipping around that math equation, kind of like we just did in that other problem. Now let's look at subtraction. Our first math equation is 20 is the same as 8. And our second math equation is 28, take away 8, is something. 
Now, let's look at that first one together. Remember, when we have a subtraction equation, it should be something like we have a total or a whole, and we're taking away one part, and that's the same as another part. So it looks like this first math equation is missing a whole bunch. Do you know what we could do for this total here? Do you know what the total should be? Yeah, that's right. It should be 28. And now do you see what also is missing in that subtraction equation? Yeah, it's missing a, a minus sign or a takeaway sign. Now let's look at our second subtraction equation. If we started with 28 and we are taking away one part of 8, what's that other part that's left over? That's it. It's 20. Nice job, friend. Now we're going to do one more of these. But for this one here, we're going to look at this dice, and we're going to use that to figure out our parts. And this is kind of leading you up to the work that we're going to do tomorrow, because tomorrow we're going to be looking at making a 10 when adding with three numbers. So looking at our dice here, it looks like we have one side of four, one side of six, and one side of five. Now there are other sides on this dice too, but we're just looking at these sides right here that we can see. So the first one is four, then there's six, and then there's five. Do you see any two numbers that can be added together to make a 10? Yeah, that's it. We have our six and our four. Those two sides can be added together to make a 10. Now, do you see which number is left over? Yeah, that's it. It's a five. And now look at that. We can quickly add these two numbers together to get a teen number. Now, what does 10 and 5 make together? Yeah, that's it. 15. Now, again, we're going to use our number bond that we just made together to figure out any missing parts in our addition and subtraction equation. So first, we're going to look at addition. And we're going to look at this first one here because that's the only one that's missing something. It says 10 plus something will give me 15. So if I'm looking at that number bond there and I have 10, what number does it go with to get to 15? Yeah, that's it. It's right here. It's going to go with 5. Nice job, friend. Now we're going to move into subtraction. And it looks like we're just missing something from the first equation here. If we have 15 and there's something, something, and that's going to be the same as 5, what do you think is missing in that equation? Yeah, there's a whole bunch. It's probably missing something like this, right? All right, let's see. What part should we be missing? Or what part is it missing? Yeah, it's definitely missing the number 10. Now, what else is it missing? That's it. It's also missing taking away the subtraction equation too. All right, friends, this is going to be the end of our time together. But today we practiced using a number bond to determine or figure out missing numbers in our addition and subtraction equations. Remember, a number bond is when we have something that looks like this, where we have two parts and they go together to make a whole. This is something you could be practicing at home. You could use dominoes, you could use dice, or you could use some playing cards as well. And that could help you figure out what your parts could be because you could practice adding with them. And then you could also practice writing your equations too. And remember, your equations look like this. So for adding, you're putting two numbers together to make a whole. And for subtracting, you're starting with the whole and taking away one part to get the other part. All right, I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye. Vamos a empezar con nuestros ayudantes. Tenemos el perito, oso, la gatita, rosa y mi perito, bug. Ellos van a ayudarnos con las matemáticas hoy. ¿Listos? Vamos a empezar con el calendario. El calendario tiene cuántos meses en el año. 12. Muy bien. ¿Recuerdan los meses? Vamos a ver. Enero, febrero, marzo, abril. 
mayo, junio, julio, agosto, septiembre, octubre, noviembre, diciembre. Estos son los meses del año. Otra vez, cantan conmigo. Enero, febrero, marzo, abril. Mayo, junio, julio, agosto, septiembre, octubre, noviembre, diciembre. Estos son los meses del año. Ahora estamos en julio. Hoy es 7-7-2020. 7 significa julio porque es el séptimo mes del año. Y aquí estamos en el día... En el día de hoy es martes 7 de julio y el año es 2020. Miren chicos, aquí tenemos los días de la semana. ¿Quién puede recordar los días de la semana? Vamos a ver. Lunes, martes, miércoles, jueves, viernes, sábado, domingo. Tenemos Siete días en cada semana. Y empezamos con lunes. Y el, el último día es domingo. El fin de semana es sábado y domingo. Y el patrón. ¿Quién puede ver el patrón en el calendario? ¿Qué hace un patrón? Un patrón se repite. Entonces, aquí tenemos un círculo rosado, triángulo morado, cuadrado verde y se repite. Círculo, triángulo, cuadrado. Círculo, triángulo, cuadrado. Círculo, triángulo, cuadrado. Círculo, triángulo, cuadrado. Círculo, triángulo, cuadrado cuadrado, círculo, triángulo, cuadrado, círculo, triángulo, cuadrado, círculo, triángulo, cuadrado, círculo, triángulo, cuadrado, círculo. Muy bien, ahora vamos a ver, vamos a practicar con el número de 7 porque es 7 de julio. Hoy. Hoy es 7 de julio. La palabra es 7. S-I-E-T-E. El número 7 es par o impar. Recuerdan que par significa que si ponemos el número en dos partes, van a tener la misma cantidad. Y impar significa que hay uno más o uno menos en uno de los grupos. ¿Siete es par o impar? Impar. Muy bien. Porque, mira, aquí si tenemos una parte de siete aquí con tres y la otra parte aquí con cuatro, tenemos un grupo que tiene uno, uno más que el otro. Entonces es en par. Siete, el número siete en una tabla de diez es con cinco fichas arriba y dos abajo. Porque cinco más dos es igual a siete. Un enlace numérico tiene un número arriba, el entero, el total. Y dos partes abajo. Una parte tiene cinco fichas. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Y la otra parte tiene dos fichas. Cinco más dos es igual a siete. ¿Qué es otra forma o otra manera para hacer siete? ¿Puedes pensar en otra forma para formar siete? Rosa, sí, tengo una idea. Podemos poner tres en una parte aquí. Uno, dos, tres. 
y cuatro, aquí, uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Gracias, Rosa. Tenemos tres aquí y cuatro aquí. Cuatro más tres, cuatro más tres es igual a siete. Muy bien, chicos. Otra pregunta sobre el número siete. ¿Qué es uno más que siete? ¿Qué es uno menos que siete? Uno más que siete es ocho, porque brincamos uno. Uno más que siete sería ocho. Y uno menos que siete, brincan atrás, es seis. Ahora vamos a continuar como ayer con charlas de números con Bug, Rosa y Oso. ¿Listos? ¿Qué número ves? ¿Dijiste cinco? Es cinco. Tenemos uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco fichas. ¿Dijiste siete? Sí, es siete porque tenemos tres aquí y tres aquí. Tres más tres es igual a seis y uno más sería siete. Es seis, dos, cuatro, seis. Dos más dos más dos es seis. ¿Dijiste 10? Sí, es 10. Es como un, una tabla de 10 con 5 arriba y 5 abajo. 5 más 5 es igual a 10. ¿Dijiste 9? Sí, es 9 porque 4 más 4, dos grupos de 4, es 1. 8 más 1 es 9. Ahora, chicos, vamos a continuar con mi meta. Nuestra meta de hoy es la cosa que queremos aprender y usar en matemáticas. Lean conmigo. Mi meta. Puedo resolver ecuaciones usando sumas y restas. Otra vez. Puedo resolver ecuaciones usando sumas y restas. Puedo usar el signo aquí para sumar. Puedo usar el signo menos para restar. Puedo mostrar mi trabajo con un dibujo. Pueden hacer un dibujo con... Uh, un enlace numérico, pueden usar una línea de números, pueden usar una tabla de 10, como quieran. Ok, chicos, aquí tenemos nuestra ecuación que te di ayer. ¿Te recuerdas? 3 más 7 más 5. Oso. Hizo una estrategia con 7 más 3 primero. Él puso 7 fichas en la tabla de 10 primero y luego puso 3 más. Y al fin necesita 5 más para completar la ecuación. ¿Cuántos hay en total, Oso? Sí, es 15, porque tenemos un grupo de 10 entero. 10 más 5 es 15. Gracias, Oso. Y Rosa hizo 7 más 5 primero. Puso 7 fichas aquí, más 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. ¿Qué es 7 más 5? 
12. Muy bien, porque tenemos un grupo de 10 aquí. Más 2 es 12. Y todavía necesitamos 3 más. 1. 1. Otra vez. 1. 2. 3 más. Muy bien. Entonces, en total tenemos 15. Otra vez. Es lo mismo. Oso y Rosa hicieron los problemas en diferentes maneras, pero todavía llegaron a 15. Ahora es tu turno. Quiero ver tu trabajo haciendo 3 más 8 más 2. ¿Listos? Voy a poner la música por un minuto. Agarras tu papel y lápiz y muéstrame dos maneras para resolver tres, o una manera, digo, para hacer tres más ocho más dos. Oso, ¿quieres compartir tu estrategia primero? Ok. Hice 8 más 3 primero con las fichas. Puse 8 fichas amarillos. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 fichas más 3. 1, 2, 3. Y luego tenía que poner 1, 2. ¿Bug quiere compartir tu estrategia? Ok, Bug quiere compartir una estrategia también. 8, entonces 3 más 8 más 2 es igual a 13. Aquí, chicos, um, Rosa quería compartir una nueva estrategia con ustedes. Ella pensó en usar la línea numérica. ¿Qué hiciste, Rosa? Empecé con 3 aquí y brinco 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Llego a 11 y tengo que brincar dos más. Uno, dos. Entonces brincamos de 3 a 11. Ocho pasos. Y de 11 a 3, dos pasos. Y al fin, tengo 13. ¡Wow, Rosa! ¡Gracias! Y Bug. Bug puso 8 más 2 primero. Entonces, Bug quería poner 8 más 2 primero para hacer un grupo de 10. 8 más 2, 1, 2, sería 10 más 2. 3, 1, 2, 3. Y llegó a 13 también. Es lo mismo. Hicieron los números en, en el orden diferente, pero llegaron a 13. ¿Ves? Rosa. Rosa hice 3 más 8 primero. Más 2 para hacer 13. Y Bug hizo 8 más 2 primero. Er, 
primero 8, 1, 2, más 3, 1, 2, 3, y llego a 13 también. Es lo mismo. Ahora, chicos, es tu turno. Vamos a, vamos a practicar con ecuaciones con la resta. La resta es el signo así y significa que quitar números. Entonces, si tenemos un total, vamos a quitar números para resolver nuestro problema. ¿Listos? 14 menos 6. ¿Quién quiere compartir primero? Vamos a ver. Rosa quiere compartir primero. Rosa, ¿qué hiciste? Empecé con 14. Con 14. Aquí. Y brin brinqué 6 atrás. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Y llegué a 8. Entonces, ya sé que 14 menos 6 es igual a 8. Muy bien. Gracias, Rosa. Y, Oso, ¿quieres compartir tu estrategia? Mira, Oso, Oso hizo la estrategia con la tabla de 10. Entonces, um, ¿qué hiciste, Oso? Hice una, una tabla de 10 y puse 10 en uno y 4 en otro para formar 14. Y quitó, él quitó 6, 6 fichas. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Y ahora, ¿cuántos hay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 en total. Muy bien. Ahora es tu turno, chicos. Ahora quiero que intentes resolver el problema de resta aquí de dos maneras diferentes. Veremos diferentes respuestas y estrategias mañana. Nos vemos pronto y buen trabajo. Adiós.